screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, we are recording. So if you don't want your beautiful face to show, please switch off your video <laughs> on the screen. And we'll probably take a screenshot to put on social media or whatever. So if you really don't want your photograph, uh, get off now. Um, <laughs> Just to say welcome to everybody and thank you all for attending. I think, um, you know, the more I go through January, the more I think with all this freezing weather and the after Christmas blues and all that kind of thing, I'm thinking nurturing ourselves with self-care is, is actually really important. And I think for everybody working in the early childhood home visiting field, it has been a tough time, you know, that um, it's funny when um, everybody else, I suppose, catches a cold, we're the ones that end up with the flu trying to support children and families um, across Ireland. This uh, video or this webinar, um, and thanks very much to the organising committee, and I'll have to mention them because I'm just sitting here being a front. Uh, Sue Cullen from Preparing for Life, Mary Walker Callaghan from Life Start, Katrina Corcoran from Community Mothers, Trish Hurley from Let's Grow Together, Michelle Moore from Parent Child Plus, and uh, finally, Annabel from the Early Learning Initiative, who supports with all the admin. Um, and thanks also to the uh, WHEEL for the Training Links Programme and the What Works from the Department of Children and uh, uh, Integration and Youth, or sorry, Integration and Youth um, for their support for this. Um, and before Sonia start, Sonia starts, and we welcome Sonia to talk about, she's been helping us <coughs> ELI with self-care for years, so we're glad to spread the wealth. I'll just give you an idea of what the um, agenda is. So I'll do the overview and the welcome um, at uh, 11 o'clock approximately or a little after it. Sonia is going, to, well, it'll be 10 past. Uh, Sonia will talk about nurturing ourselves with self-care. And this is very much a webinar. And she'll take questions um, at the end. And finally, we're doing a wrap up and the next uh, workshop date, which we're very excited. Uh, Trish from Let's Grow Together in Cork is going to do a piece on uh, infant mental health. So the whole visiting alliance, what are we? We're a collaboration of five evidence-based early childhood home visiting programmes. I've just mentioned all the people involved in the working group to actually um, uh, put on this webinar and they represent community mothers, which is moving towards community families, the infant mental health, uh, Life Start, Parent Child Plus and Preparing for Life. And we're the collective national voice of early childhood home visiting in Ireland. Um, <coughs> we're involved in the development and delighted to be involved in the development of the first five national approach uh, to early childhood home visiting. And we're involved in two ways. One, you all may have heard of the Unites Project from Manute, which is doing a national review. Um, and uh, again, we are supporting that, I, I suppose, giving them access to um, our home visitors, to our coordinators and to our children and families, such that um, I suppose the model will be one fit for purpose. The other piece we're looking at, and we'll have more information about this in February, March, is a feasibility study into how we can scale up home visiting across Ireland. All of us do great work. It's on a limited basis. And I suppose our ambition is that every child in Ireland would receive whatever form of home visiting that works for them. And the five programmes are working together to ensure that happens. And what are the structures at national level that are needed? And what are the structures that at local level are needed to ensure that it's just as much a service as say public health nursing, as going to school, going to preschool and all of that good stuff. And finally, we're a working group of the Prevention and Early Intervention Network, PEN. And we thank Maria and Francis and Stacey and all involved for their support of the Alliance. The big exciting news we have is that actually um, we got funding from the What Works grant uh, to actually develop a website. And finally, uh, after a lot of to and froing, it's practically developed. There's a few tweaks to be done, but I'm delighted to present it. So what I'm going to do is to stop sharing now. I think I can do new share if I can, sorry. I'll, yeah. So. Okay, sorry. Um, 
sorry, I'll stop sharing and then share this. Okay, so here is the website. Um, it's live. All right. Um, and excuse me when you're doing something like this, sometimes it's hard to know if it'll work or it won't work. So hopefully it will for me. Um, you can look it up yourselves, the HTTPS uh, dots forward slash HVA.ie. And as you can see, it, it's about the Home Visiting Alliance. It tells you what we do. There's some resources there and it gives you information on it. And it gives us our objectives. Also, Annabelle, I don't know if you'd like to come to the fro. Annabelle is actually the person you contact. We have developed um, an email and contact and all of that, but uh, it's not quite working yet. Uh, but we're sorting out that glitch. Again, look at the tabs about what we do. Um, what we do, and you can go through it, what early childhood home visiting is, the different programs, and what they are, what they are about. The news and events, and as you can see, uh, the Unites project is there. You can read more about it. And then the second sharing knowledge, which is today, and we will put up the next one. The other piece is in terms of resources. So we have all the webinars that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that we have actually, all the recordings. So we have put them out here so that they're available for people. And if you have Free, free time, if any of us have that, you can go back and look at them. We also have some useful links in terms of the first five strategy, which is an important strategy for us. And then the, support, the most recent supporting parents one in which home visiting is mentioned um, and is very much a central tenant of the strategy. And then we have some uh, documents download the terms of reference, the overview, and then the commonalities between all our programs. While the five are different in that they, I suppose, approach things in a different way, there are a lot of commonalities. So that does that. And then we're hoping and work is continuing on developing, sorry, the member section. Sorry, the next one is prob <coughs> And we have then the various projects. So at the moment, there's three projects, the What Works Learning Together project, two of them, one from last year and this year, <coughs> and then the wheel training links. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat about it. We'd be happy to answer them. And it's now my great pleasure to introduce, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to introduce Sonia. Sadia, do you want to start? Thanks, trading? Josephine. Appreciate that. <laughs> Um, so I'm um, delighted to be invited to uh, join you guys this morning. As Josephine said, I've been doing self-care sessions with the uh, PCHP home visitors in the ELI for a few years. And, you know, I know that the home visitors who partake in that really value it. Um, so I'm hoping you guys are going to really um, get take away some some stuff from the session, some valuable uh, self-care tips from the session today. Um, I hope you're all managing to stay warm. I've got a hot water bottle on my lap right now. Um, and um, look, as I say, or as, as, as Josephine said, there'll be a chance at the end to, um, you know, if any questions, anything maybe throughout the session that kind of pops up and you think, oh yeah, that's actually something I'd like to ask more about. Please feel free. We have 10 minutes at the end of the session, all going well with my timings. Um, and, um, yeah, and, and, and after the session, even, you know, you, you know, you'll have my email address, um, from Michelle, so you can pop it, um, an email through to me. So I won't delay because time slips away quickly at these sessions. Um, so just to give you a little overview of, of what to expect from the session today, and Joe, I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the, um, I'm just going to kind of expand that out a little bit. Just give me two secs. There we go. So the aims of the session today are to have a look at what self-care is, um, the benefits of practicing self-care, tuning into our self-care needs, which can be easier said than done, um, depending on where we're at on any given day, um, some grounding and self-regulating strategies um, that, you know, I'm going to 
you know, it, I'm going to do a little guided meditation kind of halfway through the session. Um, and then just look at also some breathing exercises and um, boundaries, a really important part of self-care um, are boundaries. So we're going to have a little look at boundaries. So um, what I would like for us to have a little think about as a group and for the sake of time, I'm going to get you just to put, you know, what what your answer to this into the chat box. So what does self-care mean to you? So whether, you know, it's just, you know, you don't have to go into any great detail, but just a sentence or even a word, um, what self-care means to you. So just take a take a few moments just to reflect on that. And then you might just type into the chat box what it means to you. So let's see what I see. There's a comment come in there now. Um, I just need to scroll down here. Connection. Um, yeah, absolutely. Connection. Taking time for yourself. Me time. Um, taking time out to do the things that give you joy and you enjoy for sure. Quiet head. Yep self-love loving all these guys taking time for yourself taking time with friends headspace um taking time to care for yourself sitting in a quiet room for 20 minutes yeah that sounds heavenly looking after one's mind and body for sure because it's the two really the connection you know between the mind and body is is, is so important um time for yourself some music um so there's a lot of different ways that all of you um like to engage in self-care some people like what you know to have some quiet um space to themselves some people like to listen to music some people like to spend time with um you know friends you know so I said taking time to reflect absolutely and process what's been going on self-care taking time to process what's going on in your life and head I know it's and it's really important to be able to to take that time because really otherwise you know what our needs are tuning into what actually we need to do to care for ourselves we're not actually able to be cognizant of that so it's um taking the time is really a big part of it for sure being around positive people yeah so I, I, I suppose you know what we're seeing here is that self-care is different to everybody um, you know, what, what, you know, the, I suppose the benefits of it are, are similar, you know, but it looks different to everybody. Um, so I'm just going to move, sorry, the slide isn't for some reason changing for me there. I don't know why that is. Oh, there we go. Um, so I really love this quote. It's by a human rights activist, Audre Lorde. Um, she says um, that it's she, she said it's an attitude that says I'm responsible for myself and I will honor that responsibility as I would anything that is precious to me. And I know the first time I read that it really uh, resonated with me, I guess, self-care for all of us, you know, it's 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 a necessity, you know, it, it's not a kind of luxury. It's not a it's something that is 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 vital for for us um you know in terms of resourcing ourselves um and we're responsible you know it's it's down to us to um engage in self-care to look after ourselves it's it's really important that we we kind of think of it as an, a necessity you know not a, not a luxury um so i'm just going to have a little look at um, what self-care is in terms of, I guess, the components of it. Um, so when I when we think about self-care, a lot of you spoke about taking time for yourselves and um, to be able to process um, about engaging in things that, you know, you enjoy because you're really usually in the present moment when, when, when you're really in a state of kind of enjoyment, aren't we? You're, we're really in the moment. And when we're taking time to ourselves, it's also a means to come coming back to ourselves. So really, when we think about that, you know, mindfulness is is at its core. You know, when we're when we're in the moment, present in the moment, we are able to be with ourselves and we're able to tune into how we're feeling, what our needs are. And we're more aware of of what those things, you know, what, what, what self-care we might need to engage in. Um, 
So it's an awareness and recognition of our needs and a, and a regular, if we can, I know for, for a lot of us, we're all it, have a lot of demands on us and we live busy lives. And, you know, we've, we, we've got, I suppose, a lot of us, you know, families, work, um, extended family, you know, so there's a lot of demands on us. So regularly tuning into our needs can be, can be, and our feelings can be, you know, in terms of the time available to us can be difficult. Um, but trying to weave into our day time to just if whether it's taking 10 minutes um you know sitting down with a cup of tea and just giving yourself a chance just to process as some as some of you mentioned um in the chat box is 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 an important way for us to to engage regularly in self-care and knowing and engaging in what comforts nourishes and regulates you um so that can change from day to day, can't it? I mean, uh, sometimes we might need more more rest. We might need, um, you know, we we might need more just slowness. Other times we, you know, we might we actually need just to move more, or we might need to see somebody and connect with them. Um, so from day to day, I guess, or week to week, you know, our needs check can change, and therefore the regularly tuning into what you know what we might need is important. And as I think we all saw from the chat box, self-care is different for everyone. Um, so for some reason, it just isn't changing um, to the next slide that quickly. Anyway, not to worry. Um, so the benefits of practicing self-care. So um, it supports healthy relationships. It supports you to focus on what's true and important to you. It supports resilience helping to prevent burnout, which all of us want to, to prevent for sure. Um, and in the kind of work that, you know, you're all engaged in, I guess, you know, a lot of people who are engaged in, I guess, community work, you know, you know, they're kind of caregiving roles, you know, we, we often like to give a lot, um, in it, you know, so, um, meeting your own needs and I suppose you know taking time for ourselves may not come as easily I think so I it, it's sort of about being cognizant of that as well and thinking about okay um the more I'm giving and if I'm not like filling my cup and you know resourcing myself you know the the, the result of that could be that I burn out so you know, again, just regularly tuning into how you are, you know, do you need to take, a, you know, t time to yourself? Do you need to st step back from, from something that maybe um, is just one thing too many that you're engaged in? Um, and, but the, another benefit of practicing self-care is that it supports self-regulation. So when I say self-regulation, that is really when we're talking about grounding ourselves um, you know, it, I suppose there's different scenarios in our day to day lives, which causes stress, causes upset. And I suppose there's all there's for all of us, you know, it's about finding ways to help us come back to a calm, relaxed state um, when we are dysregulated. Um, so I guess self-care is a means to do that as well. Um, and it reduces the effects of stress. Um so that might be, uh, you know, um, mentally, emotionally, physically, um, engaging in self-care can support, you know, us to, I suppose, be more aware of uh, the chatter in our head or um, it, 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 it helps us maybe to be more aware of um, the fact that, you know, we are having some maybe difficult emotional responses to things going on in our lives. And um, maybe we need to connect around that, whether it's with ourselves or with somebody else, or maybe we need to talk about it. Um, and then physically, of course, you know, um, you know, we need we need to engage in maybe it's you know we a lot a lot a lot of us love to go for walks, you know, in nature. Um, nature can be just so grounding, can't it? Um, so you know, our daily walk can can really support us to to ground. And to put things in perspective, I guess, you know, it's different for everybody. It's certainly something I hear a lot, though, in, in 
the self-care um sessions that I run you know a lot and most people just love to get out and get it out for a walk um I've noticed there's some comments in the chat were any of those for me um take oh no they were maybe from earlier okay um so what is resilience I guess is something that kind of um it goes hand in hand with with self-care and I suppose I thought it might you know taking a moment just to reflect on what resilience is and will be beneficial so resilience um there's a lady called Dr Mally Coyne I don't know if any of you have, have come across her but she um she 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 does some kind of yeah I suppose um columns in some of the kind of um newspapers and she's um part of Brazzy's um you know the podcast he does she 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 sometimes talks on that but she has a book called love in love out and it really is around supporting anxiety and um one of the um one of the lines or one of the ways she described resilience um which I think really I think sums it up is it's learning to cope with manageable threats while having the ability to rebound in the face of difficulties. So I'll just say that again, learning to cope with manageable threats while having the ability to rebound in the face of difficulties. So, you know, when I kind of, when we think about that statement, you know, I guess it's, it's manageable threats for one, like let's, so let's think about the pandemic even, you know, um, I guess a lot of us, you know, we we rode the waves of the pandemic. But you know, and I guess for for a lot for a lot of us, you know, the pandemic did, uh, it, it you know, it, it did cause a lot of anxiety and fears for people. Um, and I guess you know, a lot of us, um, certainly for myself, you know, we, you know, as the months went on, you know, there were things that we were able to put in place um to support us through it but initially you know you felt you know you felt like you weren't being held you know with your usual I suppose um approaches to daily life like the walks that you we would have taken or um the structure around our day so I guess um but maybe but maybe you know are, are we Get engaging in meditation and maybe some some breathing exercises you know maybe that's something that we kind of wove into our day instead so that you know it helped to ground us so I suppose sometimes you know something happens and it's and it's it's unexpected um and we might have some tools in our kit that can help us but maybe some of the things that we'd usually have in our toolkit you know we've lost you know so um and again you know I think for me you know that statement really is about what what resources we have to 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 kind of navigate those various difficulties in life and I suppose all of us will have different resources and um I suppose uh, some of us will have have some that are maybe healthy coping mechanisms some of us you know and so and we all will probably have a variation of healthy and maybe not so healthy coping mechanisms so it's about even just taking time to reflect on what works and what doesn't um uh in terms of you know managing the the difficulties we face in life and I really like also just the idea that you know uh, resilience is accepting life's colorful rainbow of emotions while becoming um while becoming overwhelmed without becoming overwhelmed by them so just coming back to the idea of those resources, those protective factors that help us to manage um, to manage stress, um, you know, so for all of us, we'll have some internal resources um, that help us to manage stress and anxiety and difficulties um, that come about. And I'm just wondering if we can just take a moment just to reflect on what some of those internal resources are. And if 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 you if you'd like to share um some of them in the chat box, that would be great. Um for some reason, I'm sorry guys, I'm just trying to um Michelle, for some reason when I'm going into the chat, it's just not scrolling all the way down. Um would somebody talking, maybe just type something into it and just see if it's writing in a journal okay they're coming up now okay brilliant that's fine yeah 
So writing in a journal, brilliant. Um, thanks, guys, um, for that. I can see there's a few highs there, so it is working. Um, practicing yoga, fantastic. Um, walking, brilliant. Um, so as we can see, we all have kind of, so when I'm thinking about internal resources, so some of those are, I'd say, external, but that's okay. We can we can take the two together. Being out in nature, being close to nature, um, brilliant. So they're all kind of things that we engage in, in like, so nature is an external resource, isn't it? It's something that's available to us to engage in that helps us manage our stress levels and our, and our, our, our maybe our kind of anxiety and things like that. Praying, breathing exercises, fantastic. So that's a real internal resource, isn't it? Breathe, a breathing exercise and praying is, is, is a means of, I suppose, being in the present moment, isn't it, as well? Meditation, fantastic. Uh, reading, again, it kind of takes you into another world reading, doesn't it, you know, and and helps you to kind of, I guess, ground yourself into that story even, doesn't it, you know, and, and out of maybe a busy head that, you know, you're, you're having positive self-talk, music. Yeah, music is so powerful, isn't it? Shifting your mood, spending time with family and friends, thinking of a happy memory. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's really that kind of just bringing yourself into that moment of a memory that really brings you peace or joy. And um, so that's great, guys. Um, so I'm just going to um, the next slide here, if it will move to the next slide for me. Um, sorry, I don't know why it's it's just not. Um, it takes a few clicks of the button before it moves for me. So all of those things that you, you kind of spoke about there um, fall under these two headings. So the internal, you know, res resources that support resilience. So, so internal. So the way we think about ourselves, our self-image, you know, um, our belief system, um, self-esteem, self-worth, and believing that we are lovable and capable. So all of those things, when you think about it, if there's things that come up in our lives that cause us stress, um, you know, whether it's work related, whether it's got to do with a family relationship, whether it's got to got to do with maybe taking on a new, a new, um, like say you you're you've gone back to college, or say you know, um, you're learning a new skill. Like when maybe some things that crop up when we're trying to navigate, you know, relationship difficulties or, you know, as I say, new new skills that maybe you're learning um, you come up against, I guess, difficulties, you know, and, and, and naturally we are going to come up against difficulties. You know, if we have an internal, you know, self-image that's, you know, relatively, you know, positive, you know, it's like, well, you know what, I, I know that, OK, I'm finding it's difficult, but um, that's natural. This I'm learning something new, and you know, I know that I'm. Um, I'm. I, I'll just, you know, I'll take this one step at a time, you know. Versus, you know, I'm so bad at things. I never get things right. Um, I, you know, th th this is just. I should never, have, you know, taken this on. Um, that's really just an example. I mean, does anybody else have any sort of examples or things they wanted to share on that? You know, in terms of how um, some of these internal resources can either support or not support us. I guess our life history um, has plays a big role in how our self-image has formed, how our you know, belief system has formed. Um, I'll just see, is there anything in the chat there? Uh, oh yeah, that's some of the ones from earlier. Um, reflecting on previous experiences that worked out for sure. Um, that's a really good example, actually. You know, I mean, Okay, well, you know what? When I can think back on other times that I've I've navigated, you know, uh, you know, new things that I, I I I don't really I don't know about, but I'm learning. I'm on my way to kind of, you know, um, nailing this skill. Um, I, you know, I, I did it. I got there. You know, it, 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 you know, it's so it's 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 great to be able to draw on past experiences. Obviously, sometimes when we draw on past experiences, that maybe isn't helpful. You know, maybe things, you know, didn't work out the way we wanted them to. But maybe it's about looking about looking at what 
what things maybe you could do differently this time, you know, and this too, um, which shall pass for sure. You know, that's, that's, I think, because when we think most, most of the time things, they do pass and we, we do get through them, you know, um, and then when we go to the external resources, so, and I know a lot of you spoke about um, you, you, in the chat box, you put in things that, you know, spending time with loved ones, connecting with others, you know, um, being in nature, um, go, you know, going for the, for those walks. They're all things in our external world that, you know, we know are, are, are good for us, you know, that, you know, we know when we're feeling upset about something or if we need to talk about something, we have people in mind that we know we can rely on and trust so um both both these uh, you know the internal and external resources are all set it's 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 a means of of um in, like i guess looking at self care and and how we can i guess put more into each so what what can i do to have you know um a more positive self image or you know or what what might what what might help me to engage in more, you know, um, in terms of the external piece, you know, do, you know, would I like to be engaged in, you know, um, doing yoga more regularly and um, stuff like that, you know? Um, so self-awareness, Lydia, absolutely. I mean, to, I, I suppose at the, the kind of the core of, of self-care is self-awareness, like the, the mindfulness piece, um, you know, when we're in the present moment, um, and we're aware of what what's happening for us, you know, um, it, you know, it that's an essential uh, component of being able to then look at what our needs are um, and, you know, how we're feeling and, and whatnot. So absolutely, self-awareness is integral, really, um, to that. So let me just press this button maybe five times and then it'll it'll change to the next slide. I have faith that from changing the other slides that that will happen <laughs> because it seems to be the case that it doesn't change when I press it the first time. There we go. Um, so what I'd like us all to do now is to put um, one hand on our heart and one hand on our belly. Um, so what this really does is, well, I guess it, it just brings us closer to ourselves. You know, you can feel your chest rising with your breath. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to mute whoever that is. Or maybe, Michelle, you could do that, could you? Um, somebody just maybe um, has them, themselves off mute there. Um, so, yeah, with one hand on our heart and one hand on our belly, we can really just kind of connect with ourselves um, and it's a really good way throughout the day you know when you have a moment and you've been rushing around and everything's been really busy um it's I, I certainly find if I sit down and, and and I and I just put my hands on my you know my heart and my and, and my tummy it kind of it, it brings you grounds you quicker than say you yeah, just sitting without putting your hands on your heart and your belly now obviously everyone's different but you might feel that your heart is maybe beating that bit faster and it bringing your attention to your belly like am I holding tension in my in my belly um because really we hold a lot of our emotional um a lot of our emotions are held in, in, in you know that that energy is held in the belly so um when we're you know, when, when we're thinking about, I suppose, regulating and being able to then com communicate from a, reg a regulated place, because often in our relationships, in our day to day lives, you know, there are, there's there's just stuff that kind of causes us worry or upset or frustration, you know, and sometimes, you know, uh, with that can come a feeling of being ungrounded, you know, so not feeling calm you know that's kind of when I say regulated that's kind of what, what I'm referring to um so being able to just take a step back and and you know notice that in your body and asking yourself you know okay like you know what do I need to do right now do I need to just you know I need to process this anyway and maybe I can't do that right now but at the very least I can just take a step back from this 
until I can I've, I've branded myself um I am feeling let's just let's just say it's this fear you know there's anxiety it's you know I can feel that that's that's how that is that's just accepting that that's how you're feeling in that moment at the very least can actually be beneficial because when we're, when we're trying to fight it and um, it actually it, it, it manifests more you know um so let's see oh yes it first click it changed amazing um so there's a really and I'm sure a lot of you here have heard of this breathing technique before there's a but it's called the four seven eight breathing technique and um I I practice it you know twice daily myself um you know it's about being it's about engaging in it in a preventative kind of way rather than oh I'm going to do this breath now because I'm feeling anxious or because I'm feeling overwhelmed it, it's more so a case of well you can do it obviously at those times too but it's about doing it regularly all the time you know so that your body has become kind of because what you were really doing when we're doing this breathing technique is we're giving our nervous system um the message that everything's okay we're safe everything's okay so um I'll go into the benefits of it in in just a moment but I just wanted to kind of explain for any of you who have never heard of it before and I'm sure many many of you have how it um how we do it so uh, four, seven, eight. So we're going to, you're going to inhale, you're going to close your mouth and inhale through your nose for the count of four, mental count of four, obviously. Um, and I suppose, yeah, so I'm not, I'll, I'll maybe, we'll, we'll maybe do a round of it once I've explained it. Um, then we pause, or I like to say pause, you can say hold for a mental count of seven. So we're going to breathe in through our nose to a mental count of four. We're going to pause for seven counts and then we're going to exhale through our mouth for the count of eight now an important part of the breathing out because this helps to kind of lengthen the breath out you put the your tongue on the roof of your mouth so you're going to sit it up behind your teeth and when you're making when you're taking the breath out it just slows down that breath out it makes a kind of whooshing kind of noise so it would kind of sound like now when you do this initially, you kind of, you can feel a bit silly, but um, who cares? You know, the main thing is it's going to send your nervous system the message that you're, you're safe. Everything's okay. And so it's important the the, 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 the important thing is that, yeah, the, the breath out is longer because that's what really brings the, the, the cat, you know, brings the nervous system into a calmer state. So what we might do together is um, we'll just do two rounds of this breath. So, you know, I'll let you go at your own. We'll all just take a minute and do it now, um, the two counts while we're here. Feel for 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 everybody. I mean, have I, I'm guessing some of you have heard of it before. Whether you've kind of um, engaged in it like on a regular basis, I don't. I you know, I, I don't know. But what I will say is, um, you know, I can only say from my own experience, I find it really helpful to do. And doing it twice a day I do two rounds of it twice a day and sometimes I might add in a third if I'm having you know a day where I'm, I'm I know I'm going really fast I know I'm more in my head um and I'm not as in contact with how my body is feeling um you know I'll do it just to try and make more more connection with with what's happening in my body um Often, I think when we're going at a fast pace and 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 it can be really necessary, you know, we're all, you know, leading busy lives with a lot of demands on us, as I said earlier. But when we just take time to slow down a little bit, um, we can just release some pent up kind of 
energy in our bodies. And, and this breathing technique is just a good way to just tune into that. Um, another really good way to slow ourselves down is in the way we talk. So if you're noticing as again, that things are just going fast and your head's busy and everything's just go, 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 go. Um, another really great thing to do is just slowing down how you talk. I'm quite a fast talker. And when I start to talk more slowly, like I am right now, I do feel my body is starting to just settle a little bit more. It feels, it, it does feel not as natural to speak more slowly in the way I am now. And I'm guessing you probably are thinking, oh, she just seems like she's talking at a normal pace. I feel like I'm talking super slowly. Um, but just lowering your tone and like purposefully slowing down the pace of how you know you're talking can really actually help as well. Um, so just in terms of the benefits of the this breathing technique, and there's lots of really great breathing techniques out there. Um, I think this particular one, as I said, it's the you know the the longer breath out and the pause that really um are I suppose the elements of it that really kind of give your nervous system that uh, as as it's, I, like the guy who actually came up with the this type of breathing technique it was you know um he described it as a natural tranquilizer for the nervous system so you're giving it's like almost like you're dosing your nervous system each time you do it you know you're you're just giving it that Hey, I'm like, I'm, 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 you're, 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 you're kind of putting pin in it almost, you know, you're, you're taking out that kind of pent up energy in, in your nervous system. Um, practicing it regularly really can reduce stress, um, anxiety and, you know, panic. Um, it, you know, it has been used to treat, um, panic, um, yeah. And so I'm just going to, there's just some comments here that I didn't see. Um, so it really grounds you, yeah, and feeling calmer. I think that probably might have been, you know, Michelle or or Annabelle who put that in. And then um, Shelly, it gives you a few minutes to relax and settle your mind. Yeah, I mean, it does. I mean, I feel even just from the few minutes there myself, um, from slowing down my speech, doing the two rounds of it, um, I'm feeling more kind of settled myself. Um support sleep um yeah I mean I can say we all sleep is such an indicator isn't it of um how if if there's stress going on if we're feeling that there's sleep is disrupted often for, certainly for me it, I find if there's stuff that I'm not really getting a chance to think about during the day or that I'm avoiding thinking about or sometimes it's like I, there's nothing in particular that's going on in your head, but your body is just not settling. Now, look, sometimes it can be down to, you know, the temperature in the room, or it can be down to, um, you know, more mundane kind of things. But if there's a kind of cycle of bad sleep, um, like it is important to kind of take a look at that. Like that's a really good indicator to you that, okay, I, there's some stress held in my body or there's stuff that is going on that I really do need to take time to, to look at. And maybe there, there's some, some stuff I need to address, you know, um, or I need to talk about it. But, um, so this 478, get back, getting back to the 478 breathing technique. Um, the, it really does support sleep. I, I find it has helped my sleep for sure. Um, and it's not to say you're never going to have any difficulty sleeping. I mean, you know, that's that's uh, always going to, you know, you're going to have little patches of, of bad sleep for different reasons. But um, listen, it's worth a go. You know, it, it, what's the harm? Um, AIDS digestion. Yeah. Like when you're if you're doing this, like, say, twice a day, you know, you're 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 relaxing the muscles in your your body. So, of course, your digestion is going to work better and your energy is going to flow um flow more easily so what we're going to do now is we're going to do um a short 
um, eight, it's not more than eight minutes, I don't think, um, mindfulness, guided mindfulness. Um, and when we're finished that, I think we'll just take, uh, let me just see what time we're on. We're on quarter to 12. So yeah, yeah, we'll we'll take five minutes, I think, just after we do the guided meditation, um, you know, just to kind of move, take a movement break and we'll come back then. So um, I'm just going to get everybody to, I suppose, before we kind of, you know, um, do the actual meditation, just, I want you just to do a body scan. So, you know, what I would say is, you know, kind of unfold your legs if you have them folded in your seat Um, notice your feet on the ground just you know are they in, in a comfortable position your arms maybe just kind of uh yeah the shoulders I'd say maybe take a few rolls of your shoulders kind of back and then forward and just notice your arms kind of just hanging hanging down you know, resting the hands maybe on your on your legs, you know, with your palms either facing up or down. Um, and your neck, is it holding any tension? Maybe just stretch out your neck from side to side or give it a roll if that feels like something that helps. Um, I'm just noticing somebody isn't muted. I'll just mute them there. Um, and then what I would say is, before we now move into it, just notice your head, your forehead in particular here. Just notice if it's holding any tension, because often it can be scrunched up a bit. So just, just loosen the muscles of your forehead. Um, and finally, um, your, your jaw here. We hold a lot of tension in our jaw. So just you know, we're just loosening it a little bit if if you need to, just noticing if it's holding tension. So um you'll just now close your eyes if you feel comfortable to do that. So this guided meditation on the breath will help you learn to simply be and to look within yourself with mindfulness and calmness. Allow yourself to switch from the usual mode of doing to a mode of non-doing, of simply being. As you allow your body to become still, bring your attention to the fact that you are breathing and become aware of the movement of your breath as it comes into your body and as it leaves your body. Not manipulating the breath in any way or trying to change it. Simply being aware of it and of the feelings associated with breathing. observing the breath deep down in your belly. Feeling the abdomen as it expands gently on the in-breath and as it falls back towards your spine on the out-breath. Being totally here in each moment with each breath not trying to do anything, not trying to get any place, simply being here with your breath. Giving full care and attention to each in-breath and to each out-breath. As they follow one after the other in a never-ending cycle and flow. time to time your mind will wander off into thoughts when you notice that your attention is no longer here and no longer with your breathing without judging yourself 
bring your attention back to your breathing and ride the waves of your breathing. Be fully conscious of the duration of each breath from moment to moment. And every time you find your mind wandering off the breath, gently bringing it back to the present. Back to the moment to moment, observing of the flow of your breathing. Using your breath as an anchor to focus your attention. To bring you back to the present. Whenever you notice that your mind is becoming absorbed or reactive. Using your breath to help you tune into a state of relaxed awareness and stillness. Now as you observe your breathing, you may find from time to time that you are becoming aware of sensations in your body. As you maintain awareness of your breathing, see if it's possible to expand the field of your awareness so that it includes a sense of your body as a whole as you sit here. Feeling your body from head to toe. Becoming aware of all the sensations in your body. So that now you're observing not only the flow of breathing, but the sense of your body as a whole. Being here, whatever feelings and sensations come up in any moment, without judging them, without reacting to them, just being fully here, fully aware totally present with whatever your feelings are and with your breath and a sense of your body as a whole. And again, whenever you notice that your mind is wandering off, just bringing it back to your breathing and your body as you sit here, not going anywhere, not doing anything, just simply being, simply sitting, moment to moment, being fully present, fully with yourself. Re-establishing your awareness on the body as a whole and on the breath as it moves in and out of your body. Coming back to a sense of fullness of each in breath and the fullness of each out breath. You find yourself at any point drawn into a stream of thinking, and you notice that you're no longer observing the breath, just using your breathing and the sense of your body to anchor you and stabilize you in the present. Just being with your breathing from moment to moment, just sitting in stillness, looking for nothing and being present to all. Just as it is, just as it unfolds, just being right here, right now, complete, human, whole. credit for having spent this time nourishing yourself in a deep way by dwelling in this state of non-doing, in the state of being, for having intentionally made time for yourself to simply be who you are. And as you move back into the world, allow the benefits of this practice expand into every aspect of your life. So 
will just take until 12 o'clock to come back, which is in four minutes. Um, so we'll feel free to do what you need to for those four minutes. And I'll see you back at 12 o'clock. Hi everybody, um, just take your time to come back as I actually have gone back to the beginning. For some reason of the PowerPoint, so I'm just going to flick through it. But while I'm doing that, 
I might just um, reflect on just the meditation that we did there. Um, I suppose some important kind of points around meditation. And I suppose I say they're important because for me, as somebody who kind of dipped in and out of um, guided meditation for, you know, years, um, you know, I'd kind of really want to do it regularly. But then, you know, it, it just you'd feel you'd feel like you wanted to, but you wouldn't do it. I'm sure we all can identify with that. But I suppose what really, I suppose, changed me, my sort of my buy into it and maybe I suppose my commitment to sticking with it was um, when I learned that I suppose it's 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 not about not having any thoughts um, when we're practicing it. And um, that's not one of the objectives of it and nor is feeling necessarily relaxed and calm Um because I'm sure for similar to me, um, you know, I'm sure a lot of you probably did notice during that 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 eight minutes or whatever it was that you were having lots of thoughts come in and out. And that's that's part of it. It's it, the, the, the objective is rather that you just notice that you're having those thoughts. And then it's not about getting all, oh, God, my brain's so busy. It just, you know, there I am thinking again. It's rather a, oh, God, yeah, my 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 thoughts just kind of without even meaning to just started to manifest again um it it, the, it really the purpose of of the guided meditation is like it it's i see it as like the power of attention so it it's giving ourselves the power of where we bring our attention so if we can really exercise that muscle you know every time um you know we notice we're having a thought like we would a little puppy dog, we just kind of, we bring the lead back, we kind of bring ourselves back to our breath. So the little puppy dog or the thoughts love to just do their thing and they're always going to do that. But once we notice that that's happening and we just very calmly without any judgment, we just go, okay, I was I was thinking there. And now I'm just going to go back to just noticing my breathing. There's no special breathing or anything. It's literally just whatever way you breathe, you're just going back to noticing that you're breathing. And the more we can practice then doing that on a daily basis, um, we're, we're, we're exercising that muscle in our brain, which, you know, it, you know, is, is a real power to us really, isn't it? Because we don't want, to, we want to have more power over where we're bringing our attention. We want to be able to be more present in the moment. And really that's what, that's what meditation is about. It's about, the present moment it's about being in the present moment and training our brain to be more in the present moment now there is other ways of of doing that you know like a walk in nature where you're being really um you're you're really trying to be mindful of what's happening in the moment so you're listening to the birds you're noticing the rustle of the trees you're feeling the air on your skin um, it's a really it's a sensory it's a sensory kind of means of kind of bringing you into that moment you're noticing your breath you're noticing your feet on the ground taking those steps that's that 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 that's obviously the power of attention as well and you're practicing when the brain does its thing and it goes off into you know into thoughts you're noticing that happening and you're coming back to noticing what's in the present moment around you so for some of you, you know, that will be more suitable rather than the sitting and the guided meditation. Um, I will send you um, an audio clip of that guided meditation, though, for those of you who do want to give that a go in, in terms of practicing it more regularly. Daily, it's really a daily thing, though, to really see the benefits and reap the benefits. So following on from that, um. Um, and actually, before I move on, just very quickly, did anybody want to just share in the chat box how that was for you, whether it's one word or and look, if, if you don't have anything that, you know, comes to mind. But if you do, feel free to put it in the chat box. Um, I think somebody did there. Soothing. Oh, great, Denise. I'm glad that it was soothing. Um, you know, it's, sometimes it's not soothing, you know, or relaxing. But I'm delighted that for some of you it was, you know, um, fantastic. Um, 
so and there's something about when we do it in a group I do think it it's um you know it just if it, it feels more powerful I think you know more, yeah I found it difficult to keep my thoughts out listen I meet your sister I mean a lot of the time and um, that's the case for me um and to say that when you, there is loads of thoughts going on once you're noticing it that's all you need to do and actually usually the busier the kind of that it is actually the more you need it and the more you actually will benefit from it you know even if it doesn't feel at all relaxing for the eight minutes or whatever it is it is it is still really beneficial um oh that's fantastic yeah it was therapeutic oh god well that's fantastic well that's the that's 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 the that's the kind of winning scenario there when I was thinking different thoughts I felt what you were saying would bring me back fantastic and look you know I'm going to send you this so you can practice it um Rebecca and everybody else you know when it's exactly it's exactly the one we just did so you'll have that at your disposal to do whenever you like um just to keep an eye on the time here um, we're on seven minutes past 12, so we're okay. So um, self-regulation. So we kind of, I've, I've covered a lot of, of this already, um, talking about the various different ways that we can be mindful of what's happening in our bodies and in our, I guess, our sensory systems, you know, um, because our sensory system is, our sensory systems um, are, are, are really are at our disposal in terms of being able to grind ourselves and regulate. Um, so again, you know, it could be music, you know, a visual in terms of, you know, nature around us, or maybe it's, or it could be painting, you know, you could be somebody who likes drawing or painting, and maybe that really helps to bring you into the present moment and helps to just bring you in touch with yourself, you know, um sometimes it's movement you know could be dancing it could be yoga it could be walking something the movement though I think the quality of the movement is more paced I would say you know you're able to really feel yourself in the moment with the movement you know it could be sitting in a rocking chair you know um well that's very regulating as well you know if you're somebody who who likes to kind of just to rock, I guess. And that can be really, you know, nice for, for calming the body. I suppose when, when you think back to when we were all babies and in our, in our, in our parents' arms, you know, and they, they were rocking us back and forth. Um, you know, for some of us, it brings us back to that even, you know, it's why kids love swings as well. You know, it can, you know, it, it can be, it, it really kind of calms, their, their, their bodies you know well not all kids but you know some kids and even me as an adult kid I love to get on a swing um so um and then our mind so what helps us to kind of write to kind of calm the mind so from the chatter so I know somebody's talked about journaling you know um putting just whatever's in your head into uh into into a a book a journal and, and closing it then and just trying to just use it as a means to just empty your mind um again obviously mindfulness um like you know obviously the mind and body are so connected so you know walking I know I keep going back to walking in nature but I think so many of us do find that beneficial walking in nature you know if we engage in it in a very present mindful way it can kind of be a means to kind of taking us out of our mind and and connecting us to our body you know um or connecting the mind and body you know because often a lot of us I can well I can certainly speak for myself the head loves to take over the head loves to just talk 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 get busy 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 so finding ways to kind of slow our minds down and I do think that journaling can be a good way for that maybe talking connecting about whatever we need to talk, talk about that maybe is do, doing kind of laps in our brain you know over and over we need to maybe just talk about that and take it out of our head and and, and connect with somebody about it um, and again obviously mindfulness so somebody I think has put something in the chat there good reminding us to go back to the breathing when thoughts come in yeah completely Carmel I mean I think it's just a good reminder, isn't it? Okay, my brain is busy here and I just want to 
maybe just come back to breathing, noticing my breath. It's a real simple thing. And look, you know, it, it, it can be at different times more challenging to do depending on how maybe stressed you're feeling or how much, you know, is going on. I do think our sensory sensory overload these days, you know, there's so many things coming at us. Sometimes we need to kind of just, you know, find a way maybe to take ourselves out of maybe environments where there is sensory overload at times, you know, where it's like, okay, the only way I'm going to ground myself is to take me out of this space that I'm in right now, this physical environment, um, because it's just too much, too much going on, you know, and depending on how tired we are on any given day, you know, um, certainly for myself, if I'm feeling maybe less resourced and maybe just, you know, a little more tired, um, I'm not as good with, say, having background noise or, you know, busy spaces. So I know maybe if it's possible for me to make a choice on that day, you know, I'll try and do things where maybe it's, it is a quieter activity or, you know, I'll, I'll focus on something I can do that doesn't require full on engagement, you know, with, with people, because, you know, that's, that's minding your energy, that's self-care, you know? Um, so day to day that can, that can change, can't it? You know, um, in terms of our, our resources. Um, I just want to talk about this kind of, you know, briefly, cause I'm conscious of the, of the time and I do want to talk about boundaries, but in terms of our self-regulation, you know, and you know, being able to calm and regulate our bodies, I suppose a big part of that, you know, is our emotional, our our, our emotions, you know, um, so there's our, sen- our sensory systems, but there's obviously then our emotions and um, the energy that they bring to, to you know, to our bodies and to, to how we feel. Um, and for all of us, you know, we we all will manage our emotions in different ways at different times. And we'll all vary between all three of these um, these uh, ways that we can process them that I'm going to just um, talk about now briefly. Um, so in an ideal world, when we're thinking about regulating our emotions, we want to firstly recognize that we're feeling the emotion, because until we recognize it and are aware of it, that's where the self-awareness piece, you know, is really important. Um, and I guess taking time so that we can actually check in with ourselves to see how we're feeling so recognizing it in the first instance then maybe you know understanding why we're feeling that way you know understanding what needs might be either met or not met you know on a basic level you could think um sleep you know god I actually really am tired you know and actually for a lot of us probably even just doing that those four seven eight breaths or the meditation you might have actually registered do you know, I'm actually really tired, more tired than I realized. Um, so you, you know, okay, I am tired. Um, and you know, it's because it's the end of the week, let's just say, or maybe you're really tired because you um had just something that took more of your energy on it on it on a particular day. Um, so then you just know you're gonna need to try and uh, take an hour to yourself or maybe go to bed early. So that's a really just um, simple example. Now, we all know that emotions are a lot more complex a lot of the time than that. Um, But on those kind of basic level needs like sleep, eating, you know, they're they're kind of ones that are important, I suppose, to be recognizing you're hungry, recognizing you're tired. Now, let's face it. Some of us, you know, we're so busy that maybe, you know, it's gotten past lunchtime and we haven't eaten. You know, that, that can happen. Um, so, I mean, if we, if we look at then some of the more complex, you know, emotions and scenarios that come with them, there's times where um, maybe fear comes up for us and maybe we've registered it or not, you know, maybe we're not registering the anxiety in our body, but so it's repressed, you know, it's, it's, we're ignoring it. Um, or sometimes we might notice it and we'll just deny it's there. You know, it's like, I know it's grand, grand and fine you know, uh, it's all good. Um, so we'll push it away or, or we'll do that and we'll distract ourselves. So, you know, you get busy doing something. Oh, you know, oh, I'll, I'll clean this or I'll, I'll, you know, you just, you're not even consciously kind of making decisions about this, but you're kind of just engaging in something, you know, and you're keeping yourself distracted. 
um, and you're busy, 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 and that's keeping you away from maybe the fear and anxiety that you're actually feeling about something. So we'll all engage in all of these kind of strategies to repress our emotions. And so sometimes that's really useful because maybe at the, the time that it's come up, um, you know, it's not a safe place to process it or, you know, you need to just get through whatever it is and then you'll come back to it later. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll look at it and maybe think about what you need to do. There's other times where we're just going to keep ignoring it and keep, you know, keep pushed away. And um, eventually it, it, it does find a way of expressing itself, whether it's, you know, anger and we're snapping all over the place or, you know, it bursts out at a time when it's not even about what that was about. So that's in the number, the overreacting or the, you know, where, where it's, you know, just spilling out because we've been holding it in like, and, and, and it just needs to come out. Or, you know, the other one is it comes out in our sleep. That's the other one when we're keeping it, you know, keeping it pushed away. And then when we're trying to get asleep at night or in our dreams, it all comes out. Um, and then the ideal scenario. And for all of us, listen, this we vary, you know, between all of these different these these different ways that we process emotions. But in an ideal world, we want to contain the emotion. And how best to contain the emotion is that we recognize it. Yes, I'm feeling anxious. And you know what? It's because I'm really stuck and I don't know what to do. And, you know, I'm I'm feeling a bit over, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. And it's understandable because, you know, this is something I've never done before. And it's it is overwhelming. And I am, you know, uh, you know, I'm 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 feeling anxious. So when you're able to then acknowledge it, it's like, okay, well, maybe the first thing is just accepting that I'm feeling it. That that's kind of then gonna allow me to look at things I can do to help myself with feeling overwhelmed. Maybe I need to uh, share with somebody I'm feeling like this. Maybe they might be able to come up with some suggestions about what maybe I can do, or maybe, you know, I can ask for help, you know, asking for help can be hard for a lot of us. You know, we might be super independent people who for really good reasons, find it hard to ask for help. Um, and that's something, you know, to reflect on it as well in ways that maybe you can overcome that um but you're getting the gist everybody are you we're going to have a chance to kind of ask questions about all these things uh as i say we're going to have 10 minutes so um i'm going to just keep moving ahead um um so being able to validate our own our own feelings and our own experiences is really important in terms of being able to care for ourselves, show ourselves kindness, show ourselves consideration, all the things that I'm, I know all of you here show to other people. But being able to show it to ourselves can be, uh, you know, can be can be more difficult, can't it? You know, we have internal internal voices that maybe aren't as kind and are um, maybe more negative or crit critical. Um, so self-validation sounds like, you know, well, my feelings are valid. You know, it's okay that I'm feeling like like this. You know, I, I'm allowed to feel sad about this. I'm allowed to feel angry about, you know, such and such, you know, um, this is, this is how I'm feeling, you know, um, you know, I deserve to care for myself. Um, it's okay to express my emotions, obviously in a, in a kind of, that's where the regulation piece comes in, you know, around it's okay to express my emotions. I'm going to talk about it when I'm feeling calmer. I'm going to talk about how I was feeling um, because it's important for me to, to do that, you know, and, and, and to, you know, to, to help, I suppose in a relationship, it's, you know, it, it's, it's giving, it's, 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 it can be around connection, you know, really, you know, when we can share of ourselves, it helps us, you know, to, to, to get connection around that with another person. It's okay not to be okay. I love that Maria. It is okay not to be okay. Um, you know, it is okay not to be okay. Um, good job, go me, you know, 
we all have a hard job actually giving ourselves a pat on the back, don't we? I, I certainly do. And something I, 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 do you know what? There's times where, you know, you'll probably find you're, you're, you're in a better place to actually validate your own feelings. Um, that, um, and, and you'll often find that it's when you're more resourced actually <laughs> as it happens. Um, you know, cause often when we're on, the path to kind of maybe um our tank being empty and um, we can kind of draw on old coping mechanisms so maybe that's kind of being critical of ourselves or not being kind to ourselves because that's maybe what we'd have done before so noticing even you know what I'm actually being a bit critical of myself or I am being quite critical of myself or I'm not allowing myself to have these feelings you know and then thinking yeah it's because you know what my tank is empty. My tank is really getting pretty low here. On, 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 you know, I'm, you know, so actually that can be like almost an indicator in your kind of, you know, your, your, what do they call it? Your glove, your, you know, in, in a car where you have the, you know, the thing that tells you when you're running out of petrol, you know, that can be one of your indicators, you know, when you're maybe being more critical of yourself or you're not allowing yourself to feel how you feel, that can be one of your indicators of, okay, why is that happening? Is it because I'm really tired or something's happened where I'm feeling more stressed? Um, um, I'm just seeing some, oh, somebody has to run to crash. No problem, Sharon. I'm delighted that you're feeling more calm and relaxed. So there you go there. And trusting your instincts is a really important one. Um, you know, um, and again, sometimes we're not listening to ourselves so maybe asking you know why am not I listening to myself and trusting my own gut um so validating and regulating can, sounds like it's okay that I don't know what to do it's natural make I'm just using anxiety as a as, a, as an example I, it's natural to feel anxious when I don't know what to do um okay and you can just say this in you know it's like a meant you know you're you're talking to yourself you know mentally in your own head I'm going to take a step back I'm going to take a breath and actually really physically taking a step back sometimes just that physical act of just taking a step back or sitting up from where you're sitting or whatever it is just giving your body also that physical message you know not just the the mental message acknowledging how you're feeling yeah I am feeling anxious I am and that's how I'm feeling. And that's okay. I'm going to figure this out. You know, I'm going to trust myself that I'm going to figure this out. Um, so we're going to move on to boundaries now. We are at 25 past 12. So we have 15 minutes left. Um, so boundaries, um, they're a really important part of self-care. Um, they protect our values. So, you know, we all, I know value quality time, whether it's with family or whether it's time you value having um time for the things you love, um, whether it's you value being, you know, respected, whether that's through, I guess, being listened to, being um considered, you know, um, you know, you value kindness, you know. So there's lots of things that will um influence the kind of boundaries you set in terms of your values so what I would say to you is if you wanted to take time um we won't be able to do it today but um for yourselves you know taking time to look at just to revisit what your values are um is a really uh good step in terms of like just uh checking in around your boundaries so you know okay boundaries is something that maybe I think we all need to regularly maintain regularly check in with I mean certainly there's certain relationships for instance let's just say the the parent child relationship with young kids like their boundaries as they get older you know are going to change um so you're going to be regularly checking in and seeing okay you know you know but your values in relationships um generally speaking are going to be, you know, in terms of the core values, like your primary values, um, are going to probably never not really change. But some of the kind of values that maybe at different points in your life or different type points in your in your relationships, they may change. But also the reason for checking in on them is that maybe 
you know, you're not holding boundaries as much as, you know, you'd like to, um, you know, maybe you're not being as clear about them. Maybe you're not communicating them. Maybe, you know, so checking in to see how that, all, all of those things that, we, that, you know, are important in terms of boundaries, different in different relationships. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so barriers to boundaries. So I guess it seems obvious for sure that no one would want uh, you know, you, you, none of you would want your boundaries crossed. But for all of us here, I'm sure that, we, you know, we do allow them to be crossed. Um, and why is that? Um, so trust, um, trusting yourself is a, is one of the big ones, you know, trusting yourself um, around, you know, yeah, no, I do have this, this is my kind of right and you know it's okay to say that this is this is what I need and um to communicate that boundary you know but sometimes it's like oh god but maybe I shouldn't really you know maybe 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 it's maybe it's a bit much to ask that you know um rather than just trusting no this is what I need and I'm not feeling like you know, um, this person is really listening or considering me. And you know what? Um, it's happened, you know, a couple of times where, you know, I'm feeling resentful, you know, and I've got to trust that feeling that I'm feeling resentful and, you know, have a calm and, and you know, constructive conversation with it, with the person. So they have the opportunity as well to respond and know what maybe I'm feeling, you know, but all, sometimes our trusting ourselves around that can be, can get in the way of, of kind of, you know, talk, talking about that boundary or setting that boundary and um, not being clear about what our values are, not being clear about what it is our, you know, then our boundary is, um, our self-worth, you know, um, I guess that ties in with the trust as well, doesn't it? And then people pleasing, wow. This is a big one for all of us. I think I can certainly say for myself, that's the one that probably crops up the most. You know, you're kind of, oh, but I don't want to upset them or I don't want to, you know, yeah, I I, I don't, I, you know, I, I, I don't want them to not, not, not like me because I'm, you know, saying that I'm not going to, not going to do that. You know, somebody asks you to do something and you say, oh, I'll just say yes, because I don't want to upset them. And then maybe they won't, you know, want to, I don't know, like they, they, they don't like me as much. Um, so I will just say yes. And, but in the meantime, you're really saying no to yourself by saying yes. Cause you know, you don't really have the capacity or the time, or you're just worn out and, you know, this is just one favor too many, or this is one job adding on to a list of jobs that, you know, you, you already have that need tending to fear, fear about the other person's response. Um, anybody else have any ones that aren't listed there? Feel free to put them in the chat box that maybe come up as kind of barriers to boundaries for you. Um, let's see. Um, so, boundary process for self-care and healthy relationships so look I will be sending you the slides to this so you can um have a look at this but um yourselves um and maybe thank you Sonia really enjoyed the breathing technique oh no worries Denise um so what like first of all um breathing you know like grounding yourself you know um is really important I think when approaching any um any kind of boundary you know when you're thinking about setting boundaries or communicating boundaries um well breathing is just important generally isn't it we we need to breathe um <laughs> but um so values in your bound when you're trying to kind of if you're thinking about revisiting boundaries the first question is what are my values starting with what are the core values you know you can kind of do them in a hierarchy um then out of that, out of those values, you know, you need to think about what the what boundaries will support you being able to to kind of hold those values. Um, then you know, planning around maybe needing to communicate those boundaries or how you're going to kind of keep those boundaries in place. You know, and 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 then you know, planning those communications or you know is important, um, because they're often 
I, those kind of conversations can be anxiety provoking. They can be difficult. We can avoid them because we, we want to avoid the feelings inside of us that comes with communicating those boundaries. And um, so just noticing those feelings, you know, noticing when those feelings cause you then to avoid setting the boundary or communicating around it. Um, like I realized re on a recent holiday, um, you know, with, with my daughter, I was doing the whole people pleasing thing and I was, wasn't holding boundaries because I was wanting I to keep her happy, I suppose, and wanting her to, I guess, sometimes not kick off as well. You know, we all can think about scenarios that it ha happens in day to day, you know, um, and, you know, getting a bad habit of then just, you know, but knowing the reason behind it, I think really helps, you know, um so when I okay Anda I see her when I ask you to listen to me and you feel you have to do something to solve my problem you have failed me strange as it may seem unknown author it kind of stayed with me I thought I'd share it so when I ask you to listen to me and you feel you have to do something oh yeah yeah to fix yes it's it's I well I don't it's very true I mean when we think about that um when you're telling somebody about something emotion, like you're upset, you know, you just need to like share, unless you're asking for advice on it, you really just want to be listened to. And you want, you don't want somebody trying to fix it because that takes you out of the emotion. Cause you go into your head then don't you to stay in the body and in the emotion of it. And just to feel that person's presence there, you know, when they're not trying to give you solutions unless you've asked for solutions, you know, um, you just want to stay in the emotion and maybe, you know, you might get to a point where, you know, you've had the, you've had the release, you've had the, the kind of, um, the time to kind of process, and then you might move to, um, I guess, relating about it in a way that you want some advice, but you're, and that's so, yeah, I'm delighted to share that. Um, so this is, these are just some boundaries, as I say, you know, they're, they can be really hard when they're, you know, having, when you're having to communicate them with others, you know, when you're trying to hold them, but a good way to kind of get more comfortable with boundaries is to kind of practice setting them with yourself. So, um, and trying to hold your own boundaries with yourself. So that could sound like, you know, um, I'm only going to spend 20 minutes on social media every day, you know, and, and that's my limit. Um, I'm not going to check email after 6 PM. Um, I will put aside 10 minutes for my meditation or my walk or whatever it is that helps you ground every day. Um, I'm only going to engage in difficult conversations when I'm regulated and calm. Um, so um, somebody else has just put in, I watched an interview with Jane Fonda and she said she was 80 years old when she realized that no was a full sentence. I love that. I love this. We tend when saying no to feel like you need to explain exactly and then we get in a heap over the reason we're giving. I know. Oh, my God. That just sounds like me. You know, where you literally are like giving this big reason why you have to say no, whether it's with your, you know, you know, with your kid or whether it's, you know, a work colleague or whether it's a family member. And you're getting yourself tied up in ribbons, like explaining why you're saying no. And really the over explaining often comes from a place of, um, you know, feeling like we have to justify ourselves and when we have to feel like when we feel like we have to justify ourselves you know we don't have to justify our, our needs you know we don't have to justify why we're putting you know like but it's a really good one actually like to just um to, who, who was it that said that um oh sorry I'm crap at using this thing Shelly was that Shelly O'Reilly a brilliant Shelly um, I know. Well, listen, I can tend to over explain and somebody drew it to my attention, a family member there a couple of years ago. And now I, I so I'm just more mindful of it. But when, you know, old habits die hard. Right. Um, so let me see. I just think we're almost finished these slides now and we can go to questions. So this is just um, I'm amazed that I've kept on time because timekeeping with presentations is not my forte. But Today, I seem to have done it. So I'm thrilled with myself. Um, support self-care practice through, yes, yeah, so these are just ways that I guess, you know, when we're thinking about self-care, even just bringing ourselves back to some of these points can help just to, to kind of focus us. 
So stop trying to please everyone, the people pleasing, you know, um, Oh, yeah, the people pleasing. Right. I mean, I, I imagine everybody here does a bit of people pleasing and um, embrace change. Yeah. Fear, fearing change, you know, because for us to grow and evolve and um, to feel alive, you know, change is something that is just a part of life. And it's always happening. I mean, we're changing every day, really, when you think about it, you know, we're growing, we're, you know, we're every day is there's this change and the one given in life is actually you know I guess change like change is sort of part of life so trying to you know ride those waves of change and put structures in place to kind of hold yourself within that but you know um of course because that's that's important um live in the present as much as we can yeah being mindful you know not getting bogged down with our thoughts talking to herself in a way that we would a loved one. Yeah. That's again, you know, um, yeah. Overthinking Cora. Absolutely. Cause, um, and we just said that actually just the overthinking, um, can really bog us down. Um, simplifying our day, prioritizing good nutrition and sleep really like really important sleep and nutrition, you know, can really be, life like when when you I'm sure you can all for me if I'm sleeping well you know I, I'm far better resourced for for most things um notice your thoughts are they helpful or unhelpful yeah and that's a great way to keep track of those kind of negative thoughts that just uh, spiral not feeling guilty for taking time for myself completely you know because that's around the boundary isn't it because with boundaries often it's the guilt or the resentment that's a, that's that's the, their indicators that you need to kind of reflect on the boundary so feeling guilty for putting a boundary around taking time for yourself that's a great indicator for for any of us okay I'm feeling guilty about taking time for myself okay this is a boundary I need to put in place to protect my energy you know um so that I think, let me just uh, see, was there one more slide? I don't think, maybe there was one little slide around. Yeah, this one, Brené Brown. Compassionate people ask for what they need. They say no when they need to. And when they say yes, they mean it. They're compassionate because their boundaries keep them out of resentment. And I just love, I just think that's a, such a powerful statement. Um. So that is, I'm going to stop sharing now. Oh yeah. And this one little one here as well. Be kind to yourself. Be kind. That's easier said than done. I know, but being kind to ourselves uh, helps us actually then to be kinder to others because we're resourcing ourselves when we're being kind to ourselves. So it is exactly 1239. I cannot believe it. I'm so happy with myself. <laughs> so, um, um any questions from anybody um fire away or any comments even um anything you'd like to share whether it's on the chat or if you want to unmute yourself um go for it or maybe you've already put it all in the chat and that's that's cool too everyone's quiet there uh, hello you can hear me hello yeah, I was just saying, um, Sonia, no, no, it was brilliant. Um, the mindfulness, it's 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 um like in general, yeah, we can you know so busy, but Thanks, I, I often I I often wonder, mm -hmm. um, why doesn't it be put in as I've said this before, but like I know we're all so busy, say home visiting or whatever we do. Yeah. And even even we set aside a few minutes um a week, even if it's in our um uh supervision. Mm -hmm. like not grounding ourselves giving ourselves that time like you said when we come away from here today right we'll go back to our busy lives and yeah. um, most of us we will take it in but life will take over again yeah so it would be lovely to something to um, I don't know put in practice maybe like weave it into your you know the, yes. you know into weave like into, maybe yeah any ideas Carmel um, you know how you I, could I, I tried to, to think um I used to do yoga myself for years and and and, and, yeah. and mindfulness, but I, I must admit, you do you have to keep on doing it in order to practice it. Yeah, I suppose like um, it's kind of like habit forming, isn't it? It's habit. Yeah, even at the yeah. beginning of, of of our meeting, I remember doing groups before or being part mm -hmm. of groups like that. Like you said, you you ground yourself. 
Yeah. And you might do a few minutes breathing uh, techniques. Yeah. To just bring yourself like. um, Yeah, small, simple ways. Yes, or even like little ways, I suppose, like you said, like weave them in. Maybe, you know. Yeah, um, I think. I think the key thing is to try and and, do something that you will be able to keep up, you know, whether it is. You know, just that four, seven, eight breath a few times a day or that walk, you know, picking things that I suppose you feel won't as easily fall away, you know? Yeah, Um, I suppose suppose something that you'd, um, I suppose like everything, yeah, like put into practice. Is it more harder, is it? To keep it up, I mean. Yeah. yeah, and I think even if it's if if, if something does actually you know it y- 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 falls to the wayside, just noticing that it has and thinking, okay, I want to get that. But you know, not beating yourself up about that. That's self care, isn't it? Saying, okay, yeah. you know, the yoga went to the wayside there, and that's okay. Well, you know, but I'm going to try and get back to it. Maybe you know, at the beginning of next term or whatever it is. Yeah. It's about yeah. kind of just, just not beating yeah. yourself up about it either. Yeah. You know. I know it's like in general, um, I bring bringing wellness into to to work in yeah. some shape or form, be it be it a little because I know everyone is um, because I I think it's needed um, more so. Like getting sort today. of a check in or something where you do like yes. every few few like rounds bring, of breath or something. Like bring self care into work. Like it's lovely having to do what's been done here today. It's powerful, but like that when we all go back into the pace of life again, yeah. it's just what do we do in general to keep well? And I form, I find with social care work and with community work, right? We, well, I suppose I shouldn't be using me in statements, but I use I then. Well, yeah. I, like in general, carers, if we're working with people and children, mm-hmm. we, um, we're, we're carers. So sometimes we leave ourselves last. So well, absolutely, like I think yeah. Yeah, so I think it's very important because remember doing self-care, uh, why why are we going to this field in the first place is because we are I think more generally caring Caregivers. people. Yes, yeah. but when you give give give, I think those are the people. Especially we don't look after ourselves because we have such big hearts and we just we we, we just give. I think I agree, a lot. Yeah. Yes. So what I try to say is like if we could find something within the organization because not that we will end up getting burnt out but in order to give to others like you said our cup has to be full so just little check-ins because I, I that we can put in like you said weave into maybe the home visit that we will weave into it that will become well, I part think it's of something our, to really consider and maybe yes, you know down the road maybe and yeah. have a way to as you say bring it in to the daily kind of work where there's a way that together you can encourage each other and and to check in and and engage in some kind of grounding yes self-care I think so yeah yeah I I, I think so I think it's very needed uh, especially today um I think it's very very needed I think that's just my opinion I I really do like even if there was an option just to engage together in a in a guided meditation every once a week even that would be good wouldn't yes. it you know a, a group meditation yes. or yes. something yeah. like that yeah I'm just seeing there's some comments here as well yeah, um sorry. Lydia I agree Carmel it would be lovely to have an hour a week in your working week for reflective practice that has to go into your timesheet and journal yeah I, I wonder is there anybody already doing that I don't know but that does sound like a, a really good idea um to see is there any other kind of suggestions Yvonne Yvonne has her hand up Yvonne oh Yvonne go ahead yeah sorry I was just typing in something there yeah um even like a day in a month like have a little well-being maybe half a day like going for a walk or having a meditation yeah I know yeah we've recently joined the GRD team and they had a well-being day for us and it was lovely do you know, okay, sorry, where was that? With the other um, we're under the new management of GRD, so they had a okay. well being day there in September, and it was lovely actually. We um, did a hike, yeah, it was amazing. It's a great I mean, way to I get know, to know the other team members, too. So, there is a kind of few things maybe that is are already in place for some of you. Um, I might even what I might do is you know, when I'm sending around the guided meditation, I might just 
put in a few suggestions around how you could maybe weave it into your weeks or your 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 you know within your workplace um that might be helpful for people and I'll gather maybe some of the suggestions from here um but I'm delighted that you all kind of took um you know some nuggets away from it or gave, gave this has given you a chance I suppose to reflect on your own self-care practices um I'm conscious that it's um quarter to I mean Michelle what's our timings like now if are we, yeah, do we we're doing okay um I just got one in from a direct message that just said Sonia um uh how do we say no without hurting people like people yeah. are saying do you have any one-liners to use or anything like that without the other person taking it to heart <laughs> I which, know. which probably I know. means I'm straight like... away you're doing too much you know but um is there any way around that <laughs> I suppose it depends on the context, you know. I think, it it, sorry, Sonia, just remember your inner Jane Fonda, the no. <laughs> yeah, no. the inner Jane Fonda, I love that. <laughs> so that's the one, say, I'm chatting yes. my inner Jane Fonda, no. You know what it is? It's, you know, unfortunately, we don't have always control over how somebody else is going to feel, you know what I mean? And that's really hard. And we don't want, that was like, it's like me on a, on a, on a, I can just say my daughter, you know, I don't like seeing her upset. I don't like that. I might have to hold a boundary and she's going to be upset and she might be sad about it. But like the, unfortunately that's just life, isn't it? Sometimes, you know, we, we, the other person is going to be upset and it feels if it's upsetting for us that we might have had some role in upsetting them. But I think yeah, the the Jane Fonda, I think, you know, maybe get a picture of Jane Fonda. We all need to get a picture of Jane Fonda and kind of plaster it somewhere. Put it um, on your fridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and I do think that's very useful. I think the important thing is, is to look to the long term and the relationship and to keep stressing how important the relationship is. And I suppose yeah. I know we don't often like to explain too much but sometimes it's important for people to realize that you're not coming you're coming from a place of kindness for yourself and that you don't want to make a promise that you can't keep or that you're going to resent you know I really value our relationship yeah is the first thing that you say maybe you know I really value our relationship and that's why you know I need to be I need to be honest about you know the fact that or what or maybe whatever it is it really yeah it has, it has the scenario I'm not there's different scenarios different relationships but yeah you know you're wanting to protect the relationship really and you're <sighs> thinking about what's best for the for you and the relationship really aren't you you know yeah we're just about on time well done Sonia (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm honestly thrilled with that Mm -hmm. that's like a real feat for me so um just pass it back over to Josephine now just to round it off okay so just sorry sorry, I just wanted to say that um when we do close off you're going to get like a, a um a couple of questions are going to come up straight away just to ask you about the session it's a tick box it'll take you all of one minute but it's really valuable to us because then we can plan um effectively for the next session so if you wouldn't mind it literally pop up when you do come off the session that would be great okay. yeah so thank you thank you very that much for that michelle and i think it's very important for us to get feedback to know what we're doing right what we're doing wrong i don't worry about upsetting us um, it's important to hear what's going wrong and what's not you'd prefer rather than um, like we love to hear the praise but um, the other is just as important um, and it's part of the learning from this um, and I suppose the other thing is to say thanks to Sonia well done Sonia lots of food for thought there I think in spirit we're all wonderful but uh, <laughs> it's the practical day today and I think um uh, you know, life for everybody, I think at the moment is quite challenging and that even the people whom we're meeting with and working with are finding it challenging. So I think it's a question of, um, I suppose, just remembering that and be kind to yourself as well as kind to um, everybody else. So thank you again, Sonia. Um, 
just to say thanks also to the organizers of the session because this wouldn't happen without a lot of work and thought behind the scenes so obviously michelle and annabelle uh, sue mary walker callahan katrina corcoran uh, trish hurley and uh, i'll just give sue's second name sue sue cullen and again thanks to all uh, on the home visiting alliance um, it's a great group to work with we're very proud of the work we do in ireland and as we say like over the next few months um a, there will be a lot of talk about the new national approach to home visiting and your input is very important that self-care for home visiting peace and for families is very important and i think when we're building and thinking about the future we need to incorporate everything we learned today because i think to support families we need to be the strongest we can be so as that we can help them be the strongest they can be if that if that makes sense um, I couldn't agree more Josephine so just um the next sorry just to share my screen the next session is um on infant mental health and uh, Trish Hurley from uh, let's grow together in Cork who have done a tremendous amount of work in this area and is supporting the development of infant mental health networks across the country and in terms of home visiting i think parent mental health which a bit of adult mental health which we were talking about today is important but actually uh, if we have to give the children the tools to actually have good mental health as adults we need to start uh, pre-infancy which is the whole uh, tenant and central value of home visiting is that you're supporting families um, right from the very start conception onwards and uh, so I think this is very important and I think all of the five home visiting programs incorporate mental health infant mental health into their programs and um, it's important that that continues and that whatever the national model is that infant mental health and adult mental health is integrated into the programs and is very much a kind of as Maria there will say, uh, a prevention and early intervention approach that it's, you know, it's default where we can all talk, support each other and um, ensure good health, mental, physical, spiritual, every other kind. So that's on the 21st of uh, April uh, from 11 to 1 p.m. And Michelle and Annabelle and the rest of the team, uh, Sue, Mary, Katrina and Trish will send out all the details and uh, they're already working on it and the next one. The last piece is just to say thanks very much to everybody. Uh, and I think particularly I want to acknowledge the funders, uh, the WHEEL, the Trading Links Programme and the Department of Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science, because without that, we couldn't have these webinars. And again, if you think there's other things we could be doing, again, please let us know. And then again, the Department of Children and um, I have the term, you know, disability integration, youth and every other thing that comes up in the country, it seems at the moment, um, and the funding from the What Works Sharing Knowledge. I think it has been really important to help us develop as professionals in the context of home visiting. And um, I think it's a very exciting time in Ireland to be a home visitor now. And finally, I suppose just to acknowledge PED and the support that they um, give, <coughs> they give us. Um, I don't know if you want to say a few words, Maria. I'm putting you on the spot no, now. Just, no, no, just thanks a million. As I said, and it, it, it's amazing to see um, support being offered like that because I think that the self-care element for home visitors is just critical to, to, to carrying the weight of, that families have sometimes need somebody else to carry with them. So thanks a million for having me. Um, I And thanks so much, Sonia. I think we went into the afternoon a lot more zen out than I started. So uh, thanks for having me jump into your session, guys. OK, so just to say thank you all very much and uh, delighted that you could attend. And please don't forget the few questions at the end. They're really, really important to us. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. Thanks.